Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Familiar ver verses to everyone, to at least most of people. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Brother Nathan, can you open us and pray for the message? Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. And Father, this verse right here has helped me out in a lot of issues that I went through and a lot of trials in my life. And this verse is a very precious Bible verse to me. And Imagine what Pastor Jay is going with this. I just pray that you be there for the message, and I pray that you just give him the words what you speak. I pray that he'll speak as if it's coming from your mouth. Lord, I pray that you soften up our hearts, Lord. Please let us grab hold of your word in these times and knowing the trials that's going to come upon us. And hopefully, Lord, that we'll be able to be strong like the fathers of our faith that didn't back down and they fought the fight, and despite whatever happened, whether they got persecuted, whether they lost their lives, whatever happened, they still stood strong in you, and they trusted in you, Lord. And I pray that we also trust in you like how they trusted in you. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Title of the message is When You Face a Dead End. When You Face a Dead End. If you've ever drove in your life, most likely you faced a dead end or multiple dead ends. Especially if you're not good with the roads, you know, you will get lost quite often. Back in the day before, you know, GPS, before, you know, Google Maps, Waze, you had to use maps. A lot of times you use like Thomas Maps. And my, when I was working early back in early 2000, I had to, you know, do some meter reading and I actually used those maps, Thomas Maps. And sometimes you have to go to a, Especially down in South or Orange County, like Irvine area, they had a lot of new developments. And that was part of the area I had to read meters. And it's not updated. You know, Thomas Map's not going to update every single day. So there are new, you know, buildings and structures. And if you don't know where to go, and especially map doesn't show it, what happens? You constantly hit a dead end. You have to go to this street, turn around, go to the next street, turn around. And dead end is not fun. Let me tell you that. You know, a few years back, you know, we have King James Jubilee, and we have our speaker, Pastor Kogo. And I was, we we're going to Lancaster Church to, you know, for Jubilee. I had, I think, Pastor Kogo in my car, and I, I believe I had a couple other people. It was one of those years there was blizzard. So it was snowing in mean, Lancaster. Even last year during Thanksgiving, it snowed a lot. It was like that snow in Lancaster. When you press a brake, car doesn't stop. It just goes through. You, know, you see red light, you press brake, you just go through very slowly. I mean, good thing they don't have you know, those red light cameras in the back out there. But that's how bad it was. And we're in the car, and we're trying to get to, at that time, Brother Yancey's church. Made a left turn. I, I, I'm trying to remember. It was like 17.1 D Street, you know, 17.2 E Street. I think there was very, it was confusing. We made a left turn, and it was really, really, there's a lot of snow. You can't really see in the front. And then Pastor Cole was like, Brother, do you know where you're going? Oh, Brother, where you're going? You know, and he's like, I know, I know where we're going. You know, I, I've, I've been driving for many years. And what do you know? There's, suddenly there's no road in the front. We see this school. We see this, you know, homes on the right side. And then I know if we drive a little bit longer, there is that church, Brother Yancey's church. But 
you drive and drive, it never comes out. And at the end, we, you know, reach the dead end. And Pastor Cole goes, brother, do you know where you're going? I mean, obviously at that moment, you know, I'm sorry, you know, Pastor, you know, we have to go around. So everybody, I'm pretty sure, you know, have faced a dead end, especially when you're driving. But as a Christian, you will face a dead end in your walk of Christian life, whether it is occupational dead end, you know, whether it's financial dead end, you know, whether it's like a relationship dead end, you know, sometimes legal. And there are various dead ends that you will face. Sometimes it's health issues, right? When you do face dead end, how do you handle that dead end? When life, you know, shoots this dead end at you, how would you face it? Especially for young kids, you know, we have some kids who's preparing for college and you face a dead end. You apply to all these colleges and you got rejected to all of them. And then you're, you know, facing your, I guess, future and you don't know what to do. And your parents, you know, they're not happy. They don't know what to tell their friends. They're waiting to tell their friends that, oh, my child got accepted to certain college, you know, trying to tell everybody. But you didn't get into any college. And then you face this dead end. It's my life over. You know, I didn't get into any college. So I guess my life is over. You know, some kids will actually literally think like that. And especially in Asian countries, people actually commit suicide. You know, I mean, they, they jump off the buildings regularly. They jump in front of oncoming, you know, subway trains because they didn't get into certain schools. So when dead end faces you, would you react the same way? Do you look for a train to jump in front of? Do you look for a building to get up and jump out of? Where you just want to finish it? Where you just want to avoid it? A lot of mentality of human beings nowadays is that when you're faced with trouble, you just want to avoid it. You just want to run away from it. One thing I'll tell you, and one thing I know many of the brethren will agree, is that you have to face your troubles. You cannot try to run away from it. When you see a dead end, you cannot be like, okay, I'm so scared now. Okay, my life is over. So I'm just going to stay here. When it comes to health issues, right? You know, we have our dear pastor going through health issues and our, you know, sisters and some of the brethren. If they see this dead end, if they hear this diagnosis or prognosis from the doctor and they're like, okay, it's doom and gloom. Life is over. There's no hope. Then there's no way to live a victorious Christian life. In order to live a victorious Christian life, when you face a dead end, you have to know how to handle it. First of all, for those you know, listening, if you're not saved, you're dead in right there. Your self-righteous, your religious ways, your you know, unbelieving ways will send you straight down to hell. You hit a dead end, and that's the end of your life, and then you go straight down to hell. Whether you like it or not, you know, that's what the Bible says. Whether you agree with it or not, that's what the Bible says. So you have to make the right choice. You faced with a dead end. You went to church for all your life. You did all these religious works. You think you're a good person. You gave money to charity. You're like, I'm good. No, you're not good. You hit a wall. You're at a dead end in your spiritual walk to salvation. Then what happens? You must recognize it that, you know, I've hit a dead end now. You know, a lot of times people don't recognize that they've hit a dead end. Imagine, during that night, there was blizzard. Pastor Kogo, a couple of the brothers with me, even though there's no road in front of me, I just continue to drive, continue to drive, even though I hit a dead end. What's going to happen? You know, we're not going to make it to the service on time. We'll get lost. You know, probably a car's going to, you know, hit a ditch and it's not going to move anymore. We have to call help, 
and it will be in super, super bigger trouble. As a person, if you don't know where you're going after you die, if you have not been saved through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you got to recognize that you've hit a dead end. You must realize you're a sinner on your way to hell. You must trust that Jesus Christ died for your sins, believe that his precious blood can wash away your sins, with willingness to turn from sin, and you have to accept him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Then you get out of that dead end of on your way to hell. After you solve that problem, then as a Christian, how are you going to handle it? Some of you are at a dead end in your life, whether it's spiritual or whether it's physical or even mentally. You know, you're hit a dead end. You know, as suicide rate increases during this pandemic, because people are stuck at home and they're going crazy, uh, those people don't know what to do. But one simple answer I've heard from a Bible believer, you know, when you hit a dead end, you know, always look up. You know, you gotta look up. First thing you should do is look up. You gotta go to the Lord in prayer. You have to do a Nehemiah prayer right away, right? Just like in Nehemiah chapter two. You have to pray right away. When you're faced with a dead end, first thing you gotta do is pray. A lot of times when you and I face a dead end, we refuse to pray. We refuse to go to the Lord right away. We try to resolve and solve the problems on our own. For example, you have relationship issues. You have that in. We have, we have few, not kids anymore, we have few, you know, brothers and sisters, you know, age of marriage, I guess, right? And they might go through a wall. They've hit a dead end. Okay, I don't like this guy. I don't like this girl. You know, I don't know where we could go. We're constantly fighting. It wasn't like that in the past, right? And you're like, okay. Let me go to the internet and see how to solve, you know, relationship problems, right? Let me go to my trusted friend, right? Let's say how to deal with this and how to deal with that. And then you get some advices, you use it, you know? But it doesn't work like it should, right? Because those answers are based on, you know, their experiences. Number one thing that you should have done is what? You should have gone to the Lord in prayer. First thing. Even though it sounds like such a, how should I say, cliche thing to say, even though it sounds like something that you and I should be doing all the time, you know, because, you know, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says what? Pray without ceasing. It's something that Bible commands us to do, but it's like one of the things that we neglect the most. It's one of the things that we forget all the time. And when the trouble comes your way, when you are faced with a dead end, you just don't go to the Lord in prayer. You don't look up. You look down. You try to search things, search the answers from internet, from newspapers, from books. You call, try to search answers from friends, but you do not go to the Lord right away. When you feel like, when you feel like you've done your best to try to solve the problem and it doesn't work, that's when you go to the Lord in prayer. Well, that's kind of late, isn't it? I, mean, I guess it's never late to go to the Lord in prayer, but you could have solved, you could have gotten rid of all those unnecessary problems if you had gone to the Lord right away, whenever you have problem. Pray without ceasing is pray without ceasing, is praying always, pray at every moment. You talk to the Lord constantly, if you do which you should, if you don't, then you don't have right relationship with the Lord, then you need to go to him right away with any issues. That's why you and I, our faith need to be like little children. When they're hungry, what do they do? They call mommy or daddy. When they need something, they call mommy, daddy. When they need to go to the bathroom, they call mommy, daddy. You know, as they grow, they, send, they tend to lose that little by little, little by little. And wait until puberty. Man, they don't want any of your advices. They don't want any of your counsel. They don't want to hear from you at all. But as Christians, for some of you, you have become that Christian in your puberty. 
but you've stayed there for too long. I mean, do you want to be called a person who's been in puberty for five, ten years? I mean, when would you get out of that puberty? You're 30 years old. Why are you still acting like you're in puberty? You're 40. You're 50. I don't want to go any higher. I mean, 60, 70. But you're acting like someone who's going through puberty. Why? Because all these years after you got saved, you still do not go to the Lord. You still try to find answers from something else, someone else. Then you're going to constantly hit that dead end. And when you hit that dead end, instead of looking up, look, you know, looking up and praying to the Lord right away, you always look around, you look down. Then what's going to happen? You will not find the solution that God wants you to find. Then, in your Christian walk, just think about just past one week, not even, you know, past one year, past one month, but look about past one week. Nobody has a perfect Christian life. Then you look at your past one week and think about how was my Christian walk? How was my relationship with my family? How was my, you know, everything from A to Z in my life? When there were trouble, when there were problems, what did I do? What did you do? Did you go to the Lord right away? Or did you, get, did you let your emotion take control over you? And then you responded with your emotions instead of going to the Lord right away. That's why a lot of times, especially in marriage, you know, people fight unnecessarily because one of the parties do not go to the Lord in prayer. Right away, you're always right. Right away, you're always righteous. Right away, the other person's wrong. Instead, you should go to the Lord right away. Lord, please resolve this issue. Lord, you know, love that person through me, right? If you prayed, I guarantee you, your problem wouldn't go any bigger than it should have been. And a lot of men go to doghouse, right? Because they don't listen to their wives. And one of the main reasons is what? Because men have big egos and very haughty and proud. But Bible says that you need to humble yourselves. And it's not just men. It goes to everybody, right? You know, mothers, sisters, you know, young brethren, right? You need to humble yourselves, right? When you face a dead end, humble person will recognize right away that, you know what? You know, I must have done something wrong or something's not right. You know, I'm going to go to the Lord and I'm going to examine my life, examine my thinking and examine my ways. When do you ever think that something's wrong with me? Isn't it most of the time something's wrong with other person? Something's wrong with the situation? You know, many people have a self-pity party always. When they face a dead end, they're like, man, it's the situation. It's the environment I'm in. It's, it's not my fault. It's never my fault. It's the people around me. It's the circumstances around me that's causing me to get to this dead end. Wow. You've, been, you've been really deceived by the devil. If you think like that, if your thought process works like that, then you have really been deceived by the devil. You know, Bob John Sr. says, and I've quoted many, many times, the problem is with you. It's not with him her, or anybody, problem is with you. When you face life's dead end, you have to look at yourself. What's wrong with me? You know, people who could actually self-examine themselves can get out of that dead end. People who can't, they're stuck there, and they go deeper and deeper into trouble. That's why the Bible says examine yourself. That's why the Bible says you need to confess your sins on a daily basis. I guarantee 
for those of you who thinks that it's everyone else's fault, you haven't really gotten right with the Lord, and you don't do 1 John 1, 9, right? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you look at is other people's fault. You know, obviously, when church, you know, inside a church, when there's gossiping going on, when there's church split going on, you know, why does that happen? Because people refuse to look at themselves. They always look at others for faults. Well, one thing funny is that because you and I are fleshly being, you know, we love fleshly things, we, we tend to see all their faults really well. If someone has something on their face, you know, you could kind of recognize it right away. However, if you have something on your face, however, if you're doing something wrong, it's really hard for you to recognize it unless you see yourself in the mirror. How many times do you reflect yourself on a daily basis? Don't you know that for some of you, you might have had this eye booger for weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, it's turned to black, right? You might have actually had a booger coming out of your nose, and it's turned into a solid stone because you don't check it. Then, as a Christian, you have to check yourself on a daily basis. How often do you see yourself in the mirror? Probably many, many times. And especially if you're carrying a mirror, you're going to see it more often, right? I mean, some woman, some men too nowadays, right? They carry a mirror, and they constantly look at themselves in the mirror. I don't know what they're trying to find, right? But they're constantly looking at it, right? If people love themselves so much to constantly check how they look, but as a Christian, I mean, how often do you check yourself in the mirror, your spiritual state? If you and I check ourselves in the mirror every day as much as we see ourselves in the mirror in a normal basis, then you and I will grow continuously. How can you not? Okay, I see myself in the mirror. This is what I need to change. Oh, I've done this wrong. Okay, I got to get it right. And then you continuously improve yourself by looking at yourself. I mean, people, you know, there are stories where, you know, people like successful diet, right? You know, one of the things that they do is what? They check their weight every single day, and they check whatever they eat. And then they become successful, you know? As a Christian, I mean, you could do the same. Do you check yourself on a daily basis? Okay. Uh, how many chapters of the Bible did I read today? And then we're not doing it just for numbers' sake. You were doing it so that you could get closer to the Lord. You want to grow. And you want to spend more time with Him. So have I spent much time with the Lord in the Word of God? Have I spent much time with the Lord in prayer? Have I gone out, if I went out, you know, spread the gospel? Here and there. Did I pass some tracks out? If you don't check one day, then it becomes easier not to check the next day. And it becomes easier the third day. Then it becomes, it, it, it doesn't even bother you afterwards. Just like kids. Or, you know, imagine, remember those days when you went to school. If you miss school one day, and if you never missed a school, you feel pretty bad. You feel real bad. Oh, man, I missed the day of school. But if you miss school for the second time, you're like, oh, man, I feel bad, but not like the first time. You miss the school for the third time, fourth time, fifth time, it becomes super easy. Like, ah, it's just a school. And I, just, I could just ditch school. You know? And everything becomes easier and easier. And when you face a dead end in your Christian walk, and it becomes easier for you to just ignore it and just don't do anything about it and just be like, ah, it's all right. It's like, it's like an attitude where you think that God's like a genie in a bottle. You know, God's going to just take care of it. You know, I'm a child of God. You know, he's going to you know, pull me out of this you know, dead end and then put me at the right place. God never works like that, though. 
right? God will not do for you something that you can do on your own. If, imagine we're stuck at that blizzard and we're like, okay, we're stuck now, Pastor. So we're just going to wait for God to move our car. We're going to pray. We're going to, you know, close our eyes and we'll be teleported to, you know, Pastor Yance's church. You know, that's, that's how some people think. Or some people are like, okay, you know, people who are looking for jobs. They're like, ah, God, I know you're going to give me the best job because I go to church, because I read your Bible. And people who actually was right with the Lord, they wouldn't think like that. Maybe some other way. God just, I'm going to expect a call next week from this very nice company to offer me a job, you know, six-figure job, and I'm going to wait for it, Lord. And, of course, you're not going to get a call. And then you start blaming God. God, I'm still at the dead end. Why? Because you did not, you know, take care of me. How foolish can you get when you don't check yourself on a daily basis? You become delusional. You become where you have a self-entitlement. Isn't that funny? When people who don't work hard, people who don't do their best, is looking for more reward, more entitlement than those who actually put their time and work. Why? Because their mentality gets all messed up. And as Christians, you should never fall into that trap. You shouldn't be like, you know what? I deserve this. Why am I at a dead end? You know, if I'm at a dead end, I know God's going to you know, give me grander, greater, better things right away. You know, your mindset is like, wow. I mean, that's a that's, that's very ungrateful person, very haughty person, very proud person. And you could see right away that you, if you're that person, you have to get right with the Lord. How many of you guys in this, you know, this morning really think that you handle dead ends well? Whether it's spiritual, whether it's you know, physical, whether it's mental. Do you think you handle your dead ends like you should as a Bible believer? Or are you always more emotional? Are you always more selfish? Are you always thinking about or looking at others for blame? You have to get rid of it. You know, one thing, one characteristic as a Christian you and I should have is a no-excuse Christian. People who face dead end many times, if they're not right with the Lord, they always give excuses. Of course, and we have millions of excuses, right? Oh, I didn't do my homework. You know, dog ate it. Nowadays, my computer crashes all the time. You know, I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, you're you're preparing for a you know significant meeting or homework, and you're like, my computer crashed. You know, that's my excuse. Once in a while, I think it's true, but many times it's not. Right? Then when you face dead end, are you type of Christian who always give excuses? Right? So-and-so, because of this. You know, traffic. You know, Newsome. Corona. You know, everything is part of an excuse. You never look at yourself. Honestly, you know, I mean, Pastor Kim said it too. I mean, there are certain people that you cannot get along with, no matter what. Those are called liars, right? Liars. You can't get along with liars. They they could be fun. They could, I don't know. I don't know they could be good friends. I don't even know how you could be a good friend if you're constantly lying. But you can't trust that person. How can you have a normal relationship with that person? Whenever it happens, then what happens? What's the common theme of liars? One lie leads to another lie, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Would you want to be that kind of person? Would you want to be someone who never owns up to yourself, to your mistake, examining yourself, always blaming others, always blaming the situation, always blaming anything you can blame? You become that liar? 
And then you become that liar that grows and grows. And you become that person whom nobody wants to be around. You become that person where you become isolated, where you're just all alone. And you will only be around people just like you. Imagine if you're in a room full of con artists. I wonder how the conversation would go. Con artist A says this, B goes, you're lying. Con artist B says this, A goes, you're lying. Con artist C goes, you're both lying. There's no trust. When you're faced with deadening in your life, just be honest with yourself for a change. Think about what's wrong with you. Just ask, what is wrong with me? How did I put myself into this situation? When you reflect on yourself, when you see all the things that you messed up in your life, today, yesterday, and day before, then you get to really come to a conclusion and you get to kind of realize, man, I was at fault. That's why I'm at the dead end. I drove myself to this dead end. Then I have to realize, why did I put myself in this dead end? Was it for this? Was it for that? Then you start examining your life and you start getting right with the Lord. Lord, I put myself in this dead end because of A. And I want to get right with you, Lord. Because of B, I want to get rid of it. Because of C, I want to get out of that situation. And, you know, confess my sins for putting me into the, in that situation. Then what happens? Road starts clearing up. Weather start clearing up. You could start see the surroundings, your environment better. Man, how many times you feel like you're so blinded by your sin, where in a normal situation, you're like, I'll never do that in a normal situation. You know, I'll never say that stuff at a normal time. Like normal me wouldn't do such a thing. However, that's not a normal you. That's real you. As a flesh, you know, as a person who's saved by grace, but who still has flesh in you, you're going to constantly do it. Then you constantly have to, you know, put your flesh and think about it as a dead being. And in order to do that, you have to look at yourself constantly. Like, man, you're a dead thing. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to the Holy Ghost who's inside of me, convicting me. I'm not going to, you know, make my Holy Spirit, you know, sad. I've done enough damage. I want to make him happy, right? I want to make my Lord happy. You got to tell yourself on a daily basis. You got to tell yourself each moment when you look yourself in the mirror, I'm not going to let you control me with the strength of Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, don't ever try to do it on your own. They'll be like, okay, go, you do that, you know. You'll fall right away. You trust in the Lord to fight for you. You trust in the Lord. Then what happens? Then whenever you face a dead end in your life, you know the solution. You look at yourself. I mean, you pray to the Lord right away. And a dead end doesn't seem like a dead end anymore. Dead end seems like an opportunity to grow as a Christian. Dead end seems like opportunity to give better testimony to others. Dead end becomes opportunity for you to get closer to the Lord. Think about how you face a dead end. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the Word of God. We go our daily lives so insignificantly, indifferently, not thinking that we face dead end here and there, and we continue to blame others, blame situation, even blame you. Help us to look at ourselves, help us examine ourselves, help us to confess our sins and really get right with you, Lord, so that when we do face dead in, we know what to do. We look up and use it as opportunity to bring more glory to you and be a better testimony to people around us, Lord God. I pray that you'll be with Pastor Shrive, Lord, Please, 
Lord God, please get rid of his cancer. And also pray that the surgery they will set up as soon as possible. We pray for all the brethren who's going through any physical hardships or financial or any other hardships, Lord God, please be with them. Help them to trust you more and get closer to you. And I pray that you'll continue to protect us from devil's attacks and bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.